Today, we want to teach you how to make lo mai gai, a classic dim sum dish of sticky rice stuffed with saucy umami rich ingredients and chicken, all wrapped in a lotus leaf and steamed. It's one of those must orders at dim sum, a chance to fill up on some starch to go along with the obvious ha gao and siu mai. But deliciousness aside, whenever we do dim sum on this channel, there is sort of a hitch and one that we kind of wanted to address in this video. You see, dim sum is hard. Cha siu bao, chicken feet, ha gao. These are all absolutely delicious at a restaurant, but in a home kitchen, undeniably pretty intense. And like, dim sum is supposed to be this relaxing brunch sort of thing, right? And how could you ever relax if you're sweating over the 13th pleat of your ha gao? And really, I think this dynamic might actually go double for today's dish, because originally this wasn't even a dim sum dish. Lo Mai Gai was invented in Old Guangzhou in the 19th century by street vendors selling grab-and-go meals for people on their way to work. And even today, you don't just see Lo Mai Gai at fancy Cantonese restaurants. You can easily buy some at convenience stores throughout Guangdong. But obviously the 7-Eleven isn't wrapping their own Lo Mai Gai behind the register. So how does this all work? The answer, of course, is frozen dim sum. You see, with the exception of Ha Gao, Almost all dim sum freezes really, really well. You steam the thing till done, toss it in the freezer, and steam it again. This is why it's really easy to find packages of frozen dim sums at Chinese supermarkets. And the quality of some of these brands can actually get pretty good. So much so that you can even see some random stands in Guangdong selling steamed frozen dim sum. And the best plain meal I ever had was actually on Hainan Air that obviously just nukes them. So for this video, we wanted to show you how to make a batch of lo mai gai that you can scale up or down, freeze them all, and then re-steam at your convenience. Because lo mai gai at its core should be something at least potentially grab and go. So to get started with your lo mai gai, you're gonna need some lo mai, sticky rice. This here was just 400 grams of long grain sticky rice and something like a Thai style sticky rice would work just great. Quickly wash your rice about three or four times until that rinsing water has lost about half of its original opacity, and then fill that all up and let it soak for at least four hours and up to overnight. Then, three other lo mai gai components that we'll need to soak in advance. Eight grams each of dried shiitake mushrooms, dried shrimps, and dried scallops. Fill those guys up with some cool water, and also soak those for the same amount of time that you're soaking your sticky rice. Then, Next day now, let's sort our rice. It should be soft enough now that you could gently break it apart with your fingers. So assuming that you're at that point, just dump it all into a strainer. Now, we're gonna be steaming this rice. So for us, we'll be nestling in a damp cloth into a bamboo steamer and laying the rice in. But do feel free to use any kind of steaming setup that's convenient for your kitchen. Just make a few holes with your fingers to help the rice cook evenly and then toss that over some bubbling water. We'll be steaming this on high for a half an hour, but we'll need to come back to this every 10 minutes. So 10 minutes later, what we're gonna be doing is ladling over one cup of cool water bit by bit over the rice and flipping things as we go. This step helps make sure that the rice stays nice and moist, together with ensuring that everything cooks good and even. So just cover things up and come back in another 10 minutes. Final peak, at this point, what you'll need to do then is evaluate your rice. If the rice is still a little dry and has a slight yellowish tint to it, you'll need to do that same exact move, dumping over a cup of water and flipping it all again. For us though, we were looking okay at this point, so we didn't add any more water, but you'll still need to flip things. All things equal though, for this dish, slightly too wet would be safer than slightly too dry, so if you're unsure, just do the water ladling. Then, after it's done cooking, just dump it all into a big bowl and let things cool down. Once it's no longer hot to the touch, season it with one teaspoon salt, an eighth teaspoon MSG, an eighth teaspoon chicken bouillon powder, and a lo mai gai must, 60 grams of melted lard. Give that all a good stir, really mixing the lard in with the rice, and set that aside. Now then, let's swing back to our other soak stuff. So first, squeeze out your shiitake mushrooms, being sure to reserve that soaking liquid, and of course, discard the stems. 
Then just give those a dice, set them aside, and do the same move with the dried seafood. Reserve the liquid, tossing it together with the mushroom one, give the shrimp a good mince, and then break down the dried scallop by crushing them with the flat of your knife. Toss in a bowl and set those all aside. Then at this point, now we can prep our chicken. In the end, this is just gonna be one hunk per wrap, so no need to be too extravagant here. This was just one 100 gram drumstick deboned. Just cut the chicken into six even-ish pieces and toss those into a bowl. Marinate with a quarter teaspoon salt, a quarter teaspoon sugar, half teaspoon cornstarch, eighth teaspoon chicken bouillon, eighth teaspoon white pepper powder, half teaspoon soy sauce, quarter teaspoon dark soy for color, and give that a real good mix. Then just drizzle in a half teaspoon of toasted sesame oil, give it another quick mix, and set it aside. Then, final filling prep, optional but recommended, 40 grams worth of bamboo shoots. Just give those a good dice, and canned would also be totally fine here, but either way, if bamboo is a tough source for you, really just skip it, it'll be a tertiary ingredient in the end. Now, we're gonna fry that all up for the filling, so let's start with the chicken. First, just swirl in about two tablespoons of peanut oil, and over a high flame, go in with your chicken. Fry that for about 30 seconds, or until it looks basically cooked, then toss in a half cup of your reserved soaking liquid. At this point, toss the flame to medium and let the chicken simmer away. After about six minutes or so, that soaking liquid should be mostly reduced, so just take that all out, set it aside, and swirl in another tablespoon of oil. Over the same medium flame then, go in with your dried stuff and the optional bamboo shoot, and fry those until fragrant about one minute. Toss in the same half cup of the reserved soaking liquid, and pour in any excess sauce from frying the chicken. Then, same deal, let that reduce away. Once you're looking at something much like this, basically almost nothing left, go in with a pre-prepared sauce, the components of which I'll just leave at the top of the screen to save a bit of your time, basically just the low my guy usual suspects. Let that all cook for about a minute or two until it's formed into a good sauce. Then just take that all out and set it aside. Final Loma Guy component, the wrapper. Now the classic wrapper for Loma Guy is, of course, dried lotus leaf, which is a hyper common plant in Guangdong. It's got a really strong fragrance to it that's classic for the dish, so do use it if possible. But if you just have to make do with banana leaf or a corn husk or something, make do. Either way, just fold those leaves into quarters and soak with 80 centigrade water for a half an hour until pliable. Then, after that time, we can assemble. To do so, just squeeze out any excess liquid from the lotus leaf, then cut those leaves into quarters following the crease. For this dish, we would recommend soaking a little extra lotus leaf if you can, because if you bump into a hole or a ripped bit kind of like this, you can just cut out a little extra leaf, lay it on, and good as new. Then, to wrap, just brush a bit of peanut oil onto your leaf and grab one-sixth of your seasoned sticky rice by weight. Press that portion all together, sort of cut it in half with a spoon, and lay that bit onto your leaf. Then just follow that up with one tablespoon of your sauce, one hunk of your cooked chicken, then grab that bowl, press it in with a spoon to make a small sort of dome with your sticky rice, and lay that over. Gently seal up the sides, and then to wrap this all up, the basic logic will be sort of akin to something like an onigiri. Press in using the leaf, then roll and press in again. Wrap the sides in like a Christmas present, roll it all up, and don't worry about that little excess leaf, we'll hide it on the bottom. Now, I should note that when wrapping these, for us, we really wanted to aim for that classic dim sum sort of shape, which is why our process here might seem a little more intense than some other Loma Guy recipes. So really, don't be paranoid. If it's not perfect, that's okay. It'll still all taste great in the end. If you're curious though, we do also have an uncut video of this whole process up here if you like. But either way, just work through all of your lo my guy, six in all, and then we can steam. So, to do so, just toss your steamer over some bubbling water, swap the flame down to medium, and let that steam for 20 minutes. Then, after that time, just take them out, and with that, your lo my guy are done, just like you'd get them at a dim sum joint in Guangdong. That's it. As promised, I am aware that these were kind of on the intense side. So while fresh lo my guy are delicious, 
you really don't lose all that much from tossing them into the freezer. To do so, just wait until your steam low my guy get back down to room temperature and lay them flat in a bag. Toss that into your freezer, and whenever you want to eat these, just re-steam them. There will be no need to thaw them or anything, but for best results, do steam them over a medium flame for 30 minutes. Honestly, basically just as tasty, so you can make a big batch of these guys and enjoy some tasty lo mai gai in the weeks to come. So lo mai gai, besides the piece of chicken, you can just put whatever you want on top of that. Uh, if you want to go extravagant, go for it. Abalone, sea cucumber, whatever you want. And lately, I've also been seeing some uh, cheesy lo mai gai, which people stuff some gooey cheese inside. And that is good. So right, check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.